All right. And welcome back to another exciting episode of Rough Sketch to Final Draft. I am your host, Coach Adam. And today we are continuing on for season three through another incredible journey of some incredible topics to talk about. And today's topic is going to be about motherhood and the genuine gift that that truly is in this world. And I could think of no one else better than my amazing guest today to talk to about this topic. And um, if our amazing guest today would like to introduce herself for the benefit of the audience, please go ahead and do so now. Oh, yes. And thank you so much, Adam. I appreciate you for having me on here. First of all, um, I love what you do. I love your inspiration, um, the way you motivate people. It's just, it's really inspiring. So I just wanted to say, I appreciate you so much for having me on here. And I hope I'm not, <laughs> I'm not having delay issues. So I'm sorry about that. Um, but my name is Kristen Harden. And I'm a mom of four. I have uh, four amazing kids. They're 18, 16, 14, and eight. Um, and so it's kind of a crazy life. I'm a widow. Uh, I was widowed 10 years ago when my kids were three, five, and seven, my little boys. Um, so it was really, really difficult uh, for me getting through that. Um, it's been a crazy last 10 years, <laughs> let's just say. Um, trying to navigate through life and raising my kids um, and making a way for us. That's kind of been a big deal for me. Um, and that's kind of what brought me into being an entrepreneur. Um, mm -hmm. I wasn't always an entrepreneur at all. Um, I was an x-ray tech for 10 years and um, I loved it. I loved being an x-ray tech, but COVID hit and being in the hospital was not somewhere I wanted to be <laughs> during that time. Um, it was really scary, um, but not to mention my oldest boy, he's a heart patient. He's had three open heart surgeries. Um, and so at that time, I was terrified to bring COVID home to him. And so I decided to be a stay-at-home mom. And that's kind of when the entrepreneur side um, started to kick in because I was home. And I thought, there's a way I can make money. I know I can earn a good income from home, be home with my kids. Um and then it just kind of took off from there. Um, I'm in a place now that I'm just so thankful to God. It's a God thing to be where I am today and creating an income for us that, you know, that we can actually have fun. We can go on vacation. We can um, enjoy our life. And that's what I wanted. So I know that's a lot. <laughs> that's fantastic. It, it's, it's a breath of fresh air to see someone who's doing so much after having been going and through the journeys of life and going through so much. Most of us have ups and downs and sometimes we, you know, take some breaks and it's amazing and inspiring always. It's one of the things that was drawn for me towards you in the first place when we first started connecting about how much you really have endured through in this life that inspired me to want to reach out that I think that your, your life story will touch the lives of many who get a chance to hear more about it. And, and with that being said, is the truth of where did you find, I think, the the drive to want to create this entrepreneurial side of your life? Where did that happen? I know you kind of explained when it when it happened. Where did it happen inside of you? How, how did you know what to be drawn towards? Share, share a little bit about that. Um, well, first, you know, and foremost, I've always had it in me. I've always had a drive within me always, my whole life, um, whether it, I'm very competitive, <laughs> by the way, very competitive, even if it's against myself. Yeah. So I always want to be better um, than I was yesterday. Um, and I just want to make an impact for other people. Um, so when I started my home business, the first one that I did was with health and wellness, which is a big, important thing to me as well, um, helping people better. And so I went all in and just built a huge, incredible team doing that. Um, and it's just been a huge blessing. I have helped um, so many people with their gut health and just overall um, health and wellness. So it was a huge passion of mine. Um, it was hard, very difficult. Um, you don't find a lot of people with the same work ethic, I guess you could say. So I could be working really hard, um, working the amount of 10 people and bring other people on that don't really want to work that hard. Um, so it was, it was challenging, yeah. uh, to say the least. And um, long story short, I um, since the loss of my late husband, so this is kind of a different little little twist. Um, 
I did get remarried um, and those, you know, it didn't work out, which is okay. Um, it just wasn't in the cards. I think my life has been challenging since the loss of my husband. Um, my love life has been very challenging, but as a woman, and then being a single mom, that's when it gets scary. Um, how am I going to provide enough income? And so that's what brought me to what I'm doing now, um, which has been a complete God thing for sure. He's he's guided my path this whole time, and I'm now in a position where I'm. We're not worried about finances. Um, it's been an incredible blessing, and it's it's a whole new path. It's something I should have been doing. So it's I'm on the right path. Mm. I love that. Do you really genuinely believe that you've somewhat found your calling on the inside? Have you found that? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, Adam. I mean, what I'm what I'm doing now um, is something that I probably couldn't have done over 10 years ago. It just wouldn't have been for me. Hmm. Um, but now I'm helping people protect their families and the ones they love the most. And I help local businesses. I get out there and talk to business owners. So it's not easy every day. I'm putting myself out there all day, every day and um, help them with employee benefits, which is uh, life insurance. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as I mentioned before, um, having been widowed, we didn't have any life insurance um, back when he passed away. And I see, you know, the great importance of it now, of course, because it sure, sure would have been helpful. Um, at the time, I was grieving so much that I wasn't able to work. For a while, um, it was hard to go to the grocery store. I mean, anything in general, it was it was really challenging. So yeah. now I'm just um, I have all this life experience, and it's made it it's just made it a really easy thing for me to talk to people about, um, and it's just been a huge blessing. So I'm loving it. Yeah, I know it, and I definitely will circle back to what you had said that it's truth and the fact that. Um, one of the biggest, I think, characteristics of you, the virtues that stands out the most is that you are driven, that you have such a amazing willpower, that you are such a go-getter in that regard. Um, my accolades and my <laughs> appreciation for you and my um, admiration in that sense for you, it goes beyond words. And I'm happy to share that with the family uh, on recorded you know, history forever. It's absolutely the truth. Okay. Um, let's talk about, about well, that. Thank you. you know, Let's let's dive into Kristen there. Where where do you find this drive? You know, where where is this has this been with you always? Did you have some moments in your life where it wasn't there? And what do you do to get yourself back onto that that wonderful drive that you have? So tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, you know, um, <clears throat> it's interesting because it it has always been there. I've always had that in me. Um, sometimes I don't know where it comes from. <laughs> Uh, because I have a really um, keen ability to pick myself up um, and keep going, yeah. even when things get hard. Um, not to say that I haven't had a lot of those hard times and hard days, um, but, you know, in dealing with people um, and putting yourself out there, I think one big thing to keep in mind is, um, you know, if, if it doesn't work out with whatever it is that you're going after that day, um, it wasn't meant to. And it's mm -hmm. nothing to do with you or you as a person. Um, it just wasn't in the cards. And, you know, God has something else in store for you. Um, a, one door closes and a better one opens. It always does. Yeah. Um, so I always know that. And I hang on to that belief. Um, but one of my huge things, and I've thought about this a lot lately, is, um, and my, my perspective has changed after my husband passed away completely. Um, I choose and it's a choice every single day. I choose to live for today. Um, I can't do anything about yesterday. Mm. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I have no idea. Um, so each day I wake up and I'm grateful. Um, I start my day off being grateful yeah. for everything that I have in my life um, and focus on being happy today, working hard today. And you just repeat that the next day. I mean, I, that's, that's kind of how I live my life. I love that. I love that. Live in the now, right? Live in the present yeah. moment. Be grateful for it. Yeah. There's um, there's a cartoon, you know, in the sense of like a, you know, the old newspaper cartoon style. It's just a, a free drawn one that um, it's got three different mm -hmm. windows. You know, like when you're going to go to the food court, and one says, you know, past life or you know, past uh, psychic readings, and then they got one that's reading for the future of your life, psychic readings, and then there's one right in the middle. It's the present, and both lines are filled. But the one in the middle, at the present, no one. No one's there. 
no one's there at that line. So it's everyone's always wanted to know how what their past is playing in their present and how what their future is going to be. And very few of us are actually focused right now on that exact moment. That just what you just shared just uh, triggered that as a visualization for the audience to be able to listen to and maybe think about and resonate that in that regard as finding who you are. Yes. The drive is, is being in the present moment. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Absolutely. I think that's a perfect, a perfect way to put that. And, you know, um, living what I've lived through, I just, I know from what I've seen, it doesn't matter your age. It doesn't, you may not, you know, with my husband, he, he was there that morning, everything was normal. Um, and by that afternoon he was gone. We had a morning. So, um, it's, I, to me, it's the best way to live because worrying about things and worrying about the future, it, it steals your joy from the now. Yeah. And you've got to focus on your joy today. That's how I feel about it. I agree. I know for the sake of the audience, um, Kristen and I have had the opportunity to share about this, this moment in her life as well. And if she's comfortable sharing with it today, would you, for the sake of the audience, express kind of how your husband passed? Because it, it, it does matter in the sense of that it, it does really just kind of happen in an instant. And it was never seen. He was in the perfect epitome of health, wonderful provider, a great man. You guys were literally doing, I believe it was marathons or something that, uh, together as well as a couple. So go into that a little bit as well. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it was crazy because he, he looked to be in the best shape of his life. Right. Um, we had been running marathons together and uh, he's the one that got me into running, by the way. I hated running. Yeah. I hated it. <laughs> uh, and he took me. To, <laughs> yeah. And so he, he signs us up for a full marathon in Las Cruces, New Mexico. It's called the Baton Death March. And it was awful. Um, <laughs> so I ended up, this is kind of go, I'll get back to where we're going, but I just had to say this. It's, it's pretty wild, but I ended up <laughs> losing three toenails from that marathon, about the three. Um, so know. it was pretty rough. <laughs> <laughs> but, so that kind of determination and that drive and grit, I don't, it's just, I don't know. It's crazy. Um, I had about six or seven miles left of that full marathon. Okay. And I knew that something bad was happening to my, in my shoe. It hurt so bad. So I stopped and I took my shoe off and to check it out, big mistake because I could tell right away that it was bad and I was going to have a problem with my toenails, but I finished. I was not going to quit, <laughs> never going to quit. Um, so <laughs> it was, it was pretty intense. Um, so we did those together. We did, ended up doing quite a few big races together. Um, but at the time, right before he passed, we were actually training to do a 50K, which was our what our, our biggest one yet. Um, and he was running in our neighborhood. And um, just with his heart, I mean, it just gave out and he passed away instantly. Um, he was just blocks from the house. Me and my boys were home. Um and I knew something was happening when it happened. It was kind of strange, um, but I had a really horrible feeling. Um, I actually called my mother and asked her to please come over to sit, sit with my boy so I could go look for him because I knew. And by the time my mom pulled up, police officers were pulling up to the house. And I knew as soon as I saw them what they were going to tell me. And, and that's what they had to tell me. So pretty, pretty wild how fragile life can be. It truly is. And I just, I want to hold space for you in that sense. And also for the sake of the audience as well. And to, and thank you so much for being authentic and vulnerable to share that in the truest sense of that it adds to what we're saying and that life can really happen in the blink of an eye. Absolutely. We're all, we all drive out every single day towards our jobs to, you know, the quote unquote proverbial salt mine and coming back home isn't a guarantee, fam. Life is genuinely yeah. precious. It truly is. And having a moment when you're literally living in the present, listening to what Kristen is saying and finding a way to make this moment the best moment and not worrying about tomorrow, not worrying about yesterday is genuinely an art of living. Absolutely. That's beautiful. I love the way you put that. <laughs> it's very true. Amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> and so. Yes. Amen. <laughs> well, in the, in the sense yeah. of adding to more the capitulation, 
of this amazing journey that you've been on in your life and you've cultivated your world and then successfully been able to help others and that you're being able to be of service as a wonderful mother to your sons at home. What are some of the moments that you've found in your world when you're struggling with the challenges that you are of course being faced with? Where do you find that inner strength? Do you go to God? Do you go to your Bible? Are there particular quotes from philosophers or poets or anything else like that? Where do you find that you recharge Kristen's soul? Where does that come from for you? Well, I would say definitely for me, <clears throat> it's my faith, 1000%. Um, I know without a doubt, looking back, and, and I will say, you know, whenever I went through the grief stages of my husband's passing, yeah. I went through a period where I was pretty angry <laughs> with God. I just didn't understand, you know, why this happened to us and to my boys. Um, so it took a lot, you know, to kind of get through that. And I'm mentioning that really now because looking back, I can see that he's, that's the only way I got through all of that was God. He was there. Um, he got me through that. Um, pretty much is my foundation for everything. Um, I like to get in a quiet space um, and I just more so have conversations <laughs> with God. I just like to um, have open conversations. Um, but I would say, honestly, that the biggest thing for me, what makes the biggest difference and impact that I've noticed is if I do start my day off every single day, with gratitude. It's, it's huge. And I didn't used to do that. Um, it's something that I do regularly now because I have, I've noticed it just, it changes my entire day every single day. Um, and I feel like the more you're grateful for, the more great things are going to come your way. And I just think it's kind of the law of attraction. <laughs> um, yeah. the universe, what you put out there comes back. Yeah. It really does. Amen to that. Yeah. Amen to that. <laughs> Whatever we are putting out there in the universe of manifesting, even to uh, um, the, using the secret in that regard, right? To actually talk about it from that particular standpoint, which most of the, the whole entire world knows about it in that regard from the audience's standpoint. Um, what we are manifesting inwardly, either whether or not you have a vision board, whether or not you are saying affirmations to the windshield as you're driving towards the, you know, to the words of salt mine, or whether or not you're just waking up and actually journaling the things that you're grateful for. These types of things, I actually work with clients on a regular basis, and it radically changes who they are and how they are to themselves and to their loved ones. And that usually ends up becoming the trigger that radically changes their life. Like we, we, we usually get clients, right? In that sense, and audience, this is for the benefit of you. I'll kind of walk you through what it's like as a coaching moment in that regard, but we'll come to someone as a coach and we look for this. I want better X, Y, Z in my job. I want more pay. I um, want to work on my self-confidence. I want to do X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. Typically, as Kristen is sharing, the actual fundamentals that we end up doing literally as a coaching one-on-one -on -one session in that regard, fam, is legitimately starting to do practices as what she's suggesting is gratitude, writing things down, doing affirmations at the end of the night, at the end of the day, writing the things down that you're grateful for before you go to bed. And it's amazing that when you wake up the next morning, how you feel about you, because you're actually remembering and going through the inventory list of the things that you're genuinely happy about. And now you're looking forward to the next morning. It changes things in a subtle way. However, the subtleties is like a pebble in a pond that you can throw one pebble in it and the pebble, the ripple will literally go across the entire thing. Never underestimate mm -hmm. power of something that is quote unquote subtle in this life. I know you yeah. have something in there. Jump in. Yes, that is true. Um, I feel like the way we think and our thoughts, they really do shape um, our whole mood for the day. Um, and I've struggled with that a lot in the past, you know, with th things that I've been through. Um, it's just something that I've found. Um, I've really implemented that more this last year, to be honest. <laughs> I've struggled through the last 10 years um, off and on with, um, you know, I've always had a positive outlook. Um, but I have had times where I've been, you know, I can have down days and, and times like that. But I really have found that it helps. And I do journal at night as well. Um, I find that that makes a huge difference. I kind of manifest, if you will, like you were saying, um, what I want to happen. And I'll write it down as if it's happening. It's going to happen. Um, yes. And I think all of that 
can just change. It can just change everything for the better. It's beautiful. Yeah. And to be a God-centered woman at the same time, what a, what a gift in the truest sense here, 21st century, when that's becoming more and more challenging. Um, yes. <laughs> indeed. All right. There is so much to say about the fact of being a single parent as well. Also that anyone from this community, from the Coach Adam side of things, a rough sketch of final draft in my heart, obviously goes out to you in the biggest way forward. One of the reasons why this conversation means the world to me more than you'll ever know in that regard, being raised by a single father. <clears throat> so seeing you being an amazing single mother is absolutely incredible and should be inspiring to uh, anyone else out there doing the exact same virtuous character building, incredible journey that you're on. It is the most valuable gift of what you're able to provide. Never let that be a miss in, at, at any point in time and never let anyone not remind you how incredible that is and how incredible you are in the work that you're doing. Single motherhood, Aww, single well, you. it's, it's everything, absolutely everything. So I, I think in the sense of that motherhood is important. It's vital in that regard. What are some of the things that you have found that Motherhood and fatherhood are both very important. What are some of the significant things that you think that mothers and that motherhood brings to a family dynamic that you find that are essential in this world? What are some of those aspects that you really highlight? Some of the things that you know that you love to do as well. So share some of that. Yeah. Well, absolutely. And uh, well, being a single mom is <laughs> challenging. It's, it's not what I had envisioned for my life. Um, you know, um, but for me, for instance, I, what I try to do is give them as much love as I possibly can. Um, I want to be a soft place for them. Um, somebody that they can come to about anything. Um, so we work on that constantly, our communication, um, with one another and having teenage boys, you know, I've really been blessed with amazing boys. Um, I think I was worse in high school than they have been. So I feel like <laughs> I've really been blessed. I don't know how that happened, but they're, they're amazing boys. Um, and then I have my daughter, you know, as well, but, um, I think it's scary for anybody to be a single parent. Um, but I have faced a lot of struggles with that. Um, I have a lot of guilt, um, and I'll freely admit that I have had issues with guilt because, after their father passed, I <clears throat> had remarried. I always wanted to be a wife. That was kind of a big deal to me. Um, I had 16 years with my late husband mm -hmm. and didn't know what it was like to be alone. Yeah. Um, so I had those fears, fears of taking care of the family financially. And so I do have a lot of the, a lot of the guilt because I did remarry and I feel like it caused a lot of pain for my children to go through those things alongside mm -hmm. of me. Um, but as a parent, you know, you do the best that you can every single day. Yeah. Um, I'm not a disciplinarian. That's kind of a issue for me. I'm, I'm a softie. <laughs> and, uh, so that's pretty hard to be a single mom and to not be able to discipline <laughs> children very well. Um, they get away with a lot probably, wow. but my main thing is love and compassion yeah. and support. Um, I try to instill the drive and motivation within them. Um, and they see that in me. I try to model that for them, um, that you can get out there and you can do anything you put your mind to. Um, hard work and dedication um, always pay off. And I just, I want them to be independent <laughs> and raise them to be strong, independent um, young adults. And it's a lot sometimes. It's yeah. kind of heavy. I feel like I, I don't do everything right every day, but <laughs> but I'm trying my best. There you go. If yeah. we were perfect, we'd, we'd be back home. If we're down here, we're working on something. So never worry about the perfection. Yeah. Work, worry about the uh, the progress of things, right? Not the perfection. Yeah. I know you're doing well. But permission to go deeper in the sense of when you're modeling this incredible behavior for your children and being an amazing mother, where do you find that you are modeling that from? Did you have that modeled for you when you were growing up? Or has this been something you've created from you inside of Kristen? Is it a mix of both? You know, go into that a little bit. Where does that come from? 
Yeah, I think it's it's definitely probably a mix of both. Um, I give a lot of credit to my mom. Uh, I have an amazing mother. <laughs> um, we are best friends now. Um, we've been best friends. Well, you know, I, I was kind of um, gave her a hard time in high school. You know, I kind of mentioned that a second ago. Um, but I was the type of kid that um, I didn't fit the mold. I didn't fit into any certain crowd. Um, you know, the, the popular crowd that I just didn't fit in in a certain place and I didn't enjoy school. I wanted to get out and just do life. <laughs> That's really what I wanted to do. Um, but my mom, yeah, we're, I've apologized to her since. Um, and we've been really close all these years. Yeah. Um, but she was a single mom a lot of the time with me growing up <clears throat> and she always worked very hard to provide for me and my brother. And it was very inspiring to me to see her and where she came from. Um, her upbringing was very difficult, very challenging. Um, so I was always very proud of her for what she was able to do uh, with her life. And um, so seeing that I'm sure played a big part in who I am today. Um, and then I, I've just always had that fighter spirit, the survivor mentality. Um, and anything that I've done um, with the marathons and, you know, I just have had the desire to do my best with everything that I do. Um, and it's not about other people or competing. You know, as I mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm very competitive with myself. Um, <laughs> I challenge myself with everything and uh, it makes life more interesting, I think. There we go. You got that so. <laughs> I know. I don't think anyone listening yeah. to this will, will miss that. You can hear it in the presence and your your tonality. There's energy just bursting from you always. That's I. <laughs> I always get recharged when wherever we get a chance to connect. So um, I think <laughs> resonate with that as well. Actually, and this is the moment when I have to do what everyone in the comments always reminds me to do is to remind you all out there to like, subscribe. And leave a comment down below. I'm getting better as a as a presenter, so thank you for the reminders, fam. Thank you for keeping me humble and keeping me honest about it. Thank you again, of course, for now the uh, over 5,000 subs that we have. Um, this is an ever growing family. Again, just as a pause in between this episode, as we're kind of continuing the conversation, if you found us, it's not by accident. There are no accidents in this universe. It's just the way that it works. If there's an alignment and a synchronicity, then this content is for you. And we are a community of healers and those seeking healing and we welcome you so find us on instagram and uh you know continue to like and subscribe and share here as well and um we love you for it but um as we continue on in this conversation let's kind of take a step back and look at the fact of what are some of the life lessons that you've been learning in the whole entire aspect of all of what we've been kind of touching on with these life journeys, these ups, these downs, the business, the growth. And I know that there's a partner involved as well. That's an amazing friend of yours. And that kind of comes together and pulls this in. What have been some of the life lessons you might want to share with the audience that you've learned in this process right now? Oh, goodness. Uh, so many, so many life lessons. <laughs> um, and it's funny you say that. It's my mom, one of my mom's favorite things to say, especially to my children when she comes uh, to spend time with us, is she always have, has life lessons to tell us. Um, <laughs> yeah, she, she's amazing. She's an amazing woman. Um, I thank God for her every single day. She's, she's awesome. Such an inspiration. Um, but, oh man. Um, Definitely one thing that I've, I've learned um, is to keep your peace, protect your peace. Um, so I've, I've experienced things along the line um, where I've had to cut people out of my life. Um, and that's a hard thing to do. And I feel like um, even if it's family, um, and I know that's a tough thing to say, um, but protecting your peace is, is really important. And I used to... Um, allow things in my life that I shouldn't have and I would just suffer through it. And I've learned the older I get, um, it's just so important to me. My peace is number one, um, of importance, yeah. my peace and happiness. And if I don't have those things, I'm not the parent that I need to be. Um, I can't mm -hmm. pour into them like I need to. Yeah. So I have to have that. Um, so that's huge. Um, 
also, and this is kind of a little bit, a little bit different, but um, rejection is, you know, you're going to face rejection. I face it all the time with my being an entrepreneur. Um, and one thing that I've learned about that is rejection. It's, it's not about me. Yeah. I used to take it personal, you know, at first, um, but it's never about me. And so I've accepted that and I recognize that and um, I can move past it quickly because I know it's it's something to do with them. They're not ready or they don't see the value in what I have, but it's it's nothing to do with me as a person. Um, but being genuine and and showing kindness to people um, no matter what, every mm -hmm. day, that's yeah. just um, that's the only way for me to be. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah. So there's a lot. I'm trying to think. I know there's more. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's more life lessons. It's a big spot. I, I wanted to give you a, a wide open canvas to be able to paint that portrait however you wanted to for your life in that regard. It, it's true, though, as, as you kind of think about some other ones and let that settle. It, it is an absolute truth out there to our beautiful community, anyone who is listening now and then in the future, is that if you ever think about the idea about life and being kind towards others, it isn't about ever that life is just supposed to be easy and other, and we can't control what other people are going to do by the way as well. We all know that, but at the same time, we need to be reminded to hear that sometimes. Like I can't literally control what other people are going to do. So what do I have control over? Well, my reaction to that. So then the idea about when other people give us their poison, we should never give that back. The idea about this, you know, give a person the taste of their own medicine. No, they already know what it tastes like. They're spitting it out themselves. The reason why they're giving it to you is because someone else bit them with that venom and they're trying to give it to somebody else. Instead, yeah. be your medicine. Give them your medicine. If they were cruel to you, let your medicine be kindness. If they were mm -hmm. a liar, let your medicine be honesty, right? There's always a counteractive piece of that. And there's mm -hmm. a thing in life where sometimes you're tested, not because you've done something wrong, if we're thinking about it from a spiritual side, from a biblical side, from your God side, it's literally sometimes you're being tested to make sure that you really are who you say you are. That matters. Yeah. It really does. And sometimes it really is just, you know, that two plus two equals four, but life is going to remind you of that question again so that you don't say six or five. <laughs> that's it. It's just making sure <laughs> you know what you know. And that's yeah. okay, right. So keep going. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So along those lines, that's that's the other thing I was thinking of is um, super important. Uh, honesty and integrity. Yeah. Huge. Um, if you don't have other people's trust. How are you going to be any, any sort of leader? Who's going to want to follow you? Right. Trust is huge. Um, I've had trust, you know, situations I've been through in my life. Um, once trust is broken, <laughs> that's that's a really difficult thing um, to get back. So I feel like it's just uh, it's so powerful um, when you can just be completely honest with people. Um, and then you mentioned my friend, Ashley. So my best friend, Ashley, she partnered up with me and what I'm doing. And it has been such such a blessing, such a great journey. Um, we spend our days together getting out there, talking to people. Um, it does not feel like work because we actually goof balls together all day long and laugh. That's pretty much what we do. <laughs> and um, yeah, if you, if you were a fly in the car with us, you, you would have no idea. We are, we're silly, um, but we have a lot of fun. Yeah. My life's too short to not have fun. <laughs> right. That's how you know you're actually getting work done. That's right. Keep going. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We just, we have a blast together. And um, that's one thing between um, my friends and I, they all, they know the type of person that I am. And um, Ashley, she's partnered with me before, and I knew she was coming along with me on this journey, too. I saw it coming, and sure enough, here she is, and we're doing it. <laughs> so it's just, it's a lot of fun. Shout out to you, Ashley. You're great. I know you'll see this in the future. <laughs> well, blessings to you. Yes. Yeah. She's amazing. <laughs> Um, and shout outs too, yeah. giving out shout outs to your amazing mother. She's done a phenomenal job of being a role model for you and holding space for her in her journey of single motherhood as well, and being a great light for you and your brother during that and just continuing. Oh, thank you. True. I mean, just blessings to you. And, and it, it shows that, however, your, your family lineage is filled with uh, integrity, strength and character. 
I think in that regard, let's just kind of pivot into that exact portion of the category of the conversation of what are the qualities that you think that are great in motherhood that are good for mothers to adhere to and to glean into their lives? What are some of those characteristics that you think are quintessential for um, wonderful motherhood? Well, I would say, um, you know, definitely being, being strong. Mm. I mean, that's kind of a, yeah. kind of a big deal um, for me. I, I try to be strong for my family. And, um, but on the same note, you do need to show your soft side and that it is okay. Um, yep. It is okay to have moments where you need to let it out or cry, you know, cry with them, mm. connect with them on that level. And, I went through struggles with that, honestly, um, for quite a while after their father passed away, I thought that I needed to be strong <laughs> and I, um, would be strong for them all day, every day. And then I would stay up into the wee hours of the night. That's when I would cry. <laughs> um, I started painting, so I would stay up, um, half the night painting and it was really, um, therapeutic for me to do that, um, during my grieving process. And I come to realize that that was, I felt like I didn't handle that the right way. And it's important for your children to know that it's okay. It's okay to grieve and it's okay to see, see you in those moments as well. Um, and I spent a lot of time trying to set that down and, and just stay strong for them. So it's kind of, mm -hmm. kind of have to have a good balance and a little bit of both yeah. with your kids. Um, and it's hard sometimes. I know. And I think it's important yeah. as we're going through these lists in that sense is to hold space for that. That I'm holding space for you right now. You've done such a great job. And I know that we're, we're touching on some deep things for you in the sense that 99% of the coaching out there in the world that people actually really do have during their healing journeys in that sense. So this is for the benefit of the audience, for the benefit of us in this conversation too, is to dispel some of the limitations that this matrix, quote unquote, that we find ourselves living in this uh, cultural zeitgeist of, of life is really removing mm -hmm. some of the things that we've been taught and unlearning the things that we've learned that do not serve us because the forms of strength that we are told that are there lack the ability of a full kaleidoscope of what strength really fully entails. If we're talking about it from a healthy, healed perspective of a divine masculine or divine feminine aspect of life. A man absolutely has the ability to coddle, to be able to cuddle, to be able to be soothing, to be able to be reassuring, to be reaffirming, mm -hmm. to be a person that you can literally go to with hard truths and dad can be there. Mom can be there. These are all aspects of strength, absolute healed, healthy forms of mm -hmm. psychological, mental, physical strength i find yeah. just blowing past those ideas of the limitations that we can't be this and we can't be that and this isn't that category and remember those charts that we did when we were children you know these these words li line up with these ones it, it they need to encompass more we were taught that they only had two or three connections instead it's got 20 so your your strength is is absolutely known and i know that it's there so strength is one of the okay. characteristics Yes. Yes. Um, absolutely. And uh, one thing that I've, I struggle with, and I mean, it's partly being a single mom and being out there working. Um, I'm working really hard <laughs> to provide a good future for us, um, but it's really hard to have the, the balance. And I have seen even my teenage boys that having time with me is really important. Um, so I think that's another another huge thing is spending that quality time with them, um, finding different things, different things to do um, with them that you can create those memories. It's really easy to get so bogged down with daily life and with work um, to just come home and you don't have that quality time, you know, that you really need. And so that's, that's one thing that I'm trying to focus a lot on is um, yes, I'm tired. <laughs> Sometimes uh, there's not enough hours in the day. Um, but that quality time is, is really important and everybody's love language is different. Um, I've noticed even with my children <laughs> that, uh, one is different from the other, that's for sure. 
Um, my middle son, Aiden, he's, he's a wonderful boy. Um, he definitely likes the quality time. He wants time with me. Um, I took all of my boys out, for instance, yesterday. So we had a nice time together um, at the Big Texan. So I don't know if you know about the Big Texan, but it's oh, on Route 66. <laughs> yeah. So um, it's a huge tourist, you know, tourist spot um, on Route 66. It comes through um, Amarillo, where I live. Um, the Big Texan. So it's it's a place that everybody talks when they come through here. Yeah. Um, so I took them there yesterday. Yeah. Um, just for some bonding time. And, um, and yeah, he, he did tell me he was irritated that he wanted it just to be me and him. Wow. So, um, so that was interesting. So I feel like I, I have to work in, in those areas a lot. <laughs> I'm yeah. not spending enough quality time with him uh, is, is what it, yeah. it feels like. So it's very hard to find a balance uh, with work, um, kids, you know, taking care of the house and all the things that need to be done. Um, that's a challenge every day. Um, but yeah, figuring out what works and, um, you know, I just, um, I want my kids to be healthy and happy and yeah. it's really important to me, but it's, um, it's hard to do it all on your own. I know. Hats off yeah. to you. I think to anyone else who is out there as well, just legitimately, having been raised by a single father, everyone in the community, I think for the most part knows, but if this is new to you in that regard, I was raised by a single father. I came to this country as an immigrant with him when I was very, very young. It's just been the two of us my whole entire life, right? So it's just been us, no siblings, nothing else, just he and I. So wow. any out there who are single parents going through this situation in that regard. Know that I love you and that my hat's off to you for all the diligent work that you were doing. It is legitimately God's work. You are doing what is necessary in this life to shape and mold and change and be there for the transformation of the most vital beings that you got a chance to interact with in this world called your children. And you are their God and their goddess. You are their everything. You are their light. You are their resource. So. Yeah. Shout out to all of you and blessings to you, Kristen, absolutely, for being such a great exemplary of this uh, model of motherhood out there in the world. You were doing a phenomenal job and you were smiling through it. So, yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> That's one thing about it is, that, you know, um, I smile all the time. You know, yeah. it's just it's <laughs> the positive attitude. Um, you just have to have it. There's no other way. It, it makes everything better. It makes um, everybody around you uh, lighter and brighter. And um, yeah, you got to you got to share share some light in this world because it's there's a lot of darkness. Amen to that. Amen to that. Yeah, we, we and literally... shout out to your dad, by the way. Mm. Shout out to your dad. So I acknowledge that. <laughs> I'll make sure that he gets this one. I promise. And if. Uh, <laughs> If anyone who is listening, not getting a chance to actually see the amazing Kristen, you have to pop onto the YouTube video for this one and see this infectious smile. She's not kidding. She really is always smiling through life. And uh, you'd, you'd, be, you'd be remiss if you got a chance not to see it. So now, at the end of this episode, as we're wrapping things up with a wonderful bow, I always, always, as everyone is now is understanding as we, we build this into a habit, I like to give back to anyone who was ever the guest on this um, episode that we ever have as a chance to chat because we're growing and it's incredible. And I want to thank you all again, every single time we're now into season three, we're already starting to pre record for season four. You keep asking, I keep delivering more and more because it's what you're asking for. This all started with a rim light 14 months ago and me pouring my heart out. So shout outs to this amazing community. Mwah. I love you um, in that regard. Continue to keep growing and I'll keep doing this for you because this is where my heart is. So um, I thank you everybody. At the same time as we're wrapping up this episode, I'd love to give it back to um, any guests to basically take us down a, a rabbit hole for the next 10 to 15 minutes on any topic that you would like to. Um, maybe just a, a particular point of light that you would like to discuss to have as a remembrance in the future to be able to look back on this that you'll want to be proud of or something you wish that you would have said and now you get the chance to say it so it's a completely open season it is your moment you have carte blanche as we say in the French so say what you wish all right <laughs> I love that um well one thing that I was I was thinking about um and I've thought about this a lot lately um 
yeah. because things can be challenging and they have been a lot off and on through the years. Mm -hmm. um, but you're never ever going to reach success unless you've had failure. You're going to fail and you might fail over and over and over again. Um, but you don't never quit. Mm -hmm. Just never quit. The next thing is going to work. It may not, but you keep going. Um, I failed countless times in my life. Um, and you've got to keep going. There's the dogs. There's the dogs. There. Um, there we go. <laughs> but yes, um, there's many times that I felt like giving up yeah. in my life. Um, but you can't stay there. Whatever season you're in, you have to know that it's going to get better. It always does. You just keep going. It's huge. So that's kind of a big important thing for me too. You never fail until you stop, right? Because it, every single time, is, it, it, we've talked about this in this, this podcast before in the sense that it, it's feedback. It's not failure until you quit, just like you just said. Everything else that you've ever failed at is literally just telling you not to do it that way, but you can keep trying until you learn how. The famous example is always with Walt Disney, right? He literally went to over 230 investors to try and get a park built on a mouse. It, was, it wasn't happening, but he literally failed 230 times. Now, most of us, as we're all listening to that, it's true. You can go look it up in the history books or any of his, you know, his biographies. Most of us maybe would have quit at maybe five. If we would have had you know, investors and lawyers slam the door in our face five times, that's, that's pretty good, right? Ten, someone in our family would have called us a zealot and said, you got a lot of drive, a lot of piss and vinegar in your veins, but you know, maybe it's just not supposed yeah. to be. 200 times? That's a lot. <laughs> That's a that lot. is a lot. <laughs> so yes. I'm with you. Never quit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Never, 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 never quit. quit. Never quit. There's just, there's, there's <laughs> no failure. There's only feedback. I love that. Just kiss. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, we'll wrap it up with a pretty boy on that one. And I, I also, where, where do people get a chance to find you if they want to work with you? Um, we'll leave their, your links down below. What, what, where can people find you, Kristen? Um. Oh, goodness. Well, um, I guess the main things, you know, we're going to be my Instagram. Yeah. Uh, so I'll have to drop that on here um, and Facebook, but mainly Instagram. Yeah. Gotcha. And we'll leave those links down below so that people can find you and follow you and support you. And uh, you can use this for Absolutely. work and everything else like that in the future. So, but, yeah, it's been that a would be wonderful. Good. Good blessing. Thank you so much for being an incredible guest. And, uh, we look forward to having chats with you again. And thank you for being a part of this ever-growing community. Kristen, we love you. And thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Adam. You're, you're amazing. I love what you do. Keep doing it. Working on it. Working on it. Working on it. Thank you, fam. Thank you for tuning in. And we look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a wonderful night. Cheers. <laughs>